Boogie, if it's okay, I just introduce you and we begin this uh, webinar. Uh, we're very fortunate to have with us uh, Dr. Stefan Boogie. Uh, Dr. Boogie is a, uh, is a faculty uh, emeritus from uh, USC Keck School of Medicine. Uh, he has served as a clinical associate professor uh, from in the Department of Endocrinology at USC, and he uh, was a researcher, and he continues to do quite a bit of research and, and worldwide international uh, presentations, along with his daughter, Dr. Stephanie Boogie, who will join us next week for the webinar. Uh, Dr. Boogie has uh, done a great deal of research in the area of, of uh, stress management, uh, health, wellness, uh, connection of the nutrition and the, uh, and, and the endocrine system and, and wellness. So this is really an appropriate time for all of us to focus on our uh, health. Uh, it's a great time for us to kind of turn inward and use all of these resources to uh, take all of the actions that we can to improve our health. So we are very fortunate to have this world-renowned expert with us today. So uh, please help me welcome Dr. Stefan Boogie, and uh, the floor is all yours, Dr. Boogie. Thank you. Great, great. Uh, thank you, Dr. Zadek. It uh, was uh, very kind for uh, inviting me. Uh, can you hear me well? We hear you perfectly. Great, great. So uh, this uh, is supposed to be a team presentation. Uh, however, today I'm going to, to present uh, uh, by myself. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about um, physical and emotional wellness, uh, which means we need to uh, talk about stress and how to, uh, to approach stress. Uh, as a disclaimer, I have, uh, we have no financial disclosure or conflicts of interest uh, with the presented material in this presentation. And uh, here are some of the objectives uh, of the presentation. One is to understand the concept of stress, uh, define the health consequences of stress and how that impacts uh, our daily life. And uh, ultimately, we are going to talk about uh, modalities uh, to develop resilience uh, to stress and preserve physical, uh, um, psychological and uh, emotional um, health. So uh, many experts uh, consider that stress is uh, one of our worst enemy and uh, uh, globally we experience this uh, as a result of uh, this, uh, this pandemic. Um, stress uh, is uh, defined by experts uh, such as Hans Eliai, which is the pioneer who coined the definition of stress as a non-specific response to uh, any demand. Uh, or is regarded as a stimulus or an uh, adaptive response. Uh, however, those who uh, did uh, research and continue to uh, study stress uh, feel that uh, stress is life and uh, life is stress. In practice, uh, all of us uh, experience stress uh, uh, constantly. Uh, however, it's important uh, if we experience a positive or negative stress Probably more important than that uh, is how we adjust and uh, cope with the stress uh, we experience on a daily basis. Uh, throughout uh, life, uh, we experience day, uh, stress from the day we are born uh, until uh, uh, the day uh, we die. And there are periods of uh, life when uh, the stress we experience is significantly higher. Uh, reason is because the number one cause of stress is change. So that's the reason uh, adolescents going through puberty experience more stress than uh, prior to uh, get through the puberty. The same is true for uh, women during the menopause, for men during under andropause uh, or retirement. So uh, changes uh, we experience uh, uh, on a daily basis. Uh, can be a major uh, cause uh, of, uh, of stress. Uh, if you talk about uh, the impact of stress on our health, uh, we need to understand that uh, stress uh, will affect uh, physical, mental, uh, emotional uh, levels. Uh, and uh, will take probably hours or days to talk about the implication of uh, stress on health. But one uh, idea which I think we need to keep in mind uh, when you talk about stress uh, is uh, 
uh, how uh, stress affects uh, people who go to doctors. Uh, and uh, literature reports that if we talk about uh, 10 patients who go and see a primary care physician, uh, eight of them uh, will see the physician because of stress-related problem. Uh, that can be related to back pain, fatigue, fibromyalgia, insomnia, headache, you, you, you name it. So uh, clearly uh, stress is uh, very common uh, and affects us at uh, many, many levels. Um, we experience tremendous amount of stress uh, in a speed up, overstressed society uh, where everyone uh, is busy. Uh, the changes we experience uh, during this pandemic are a major cause of uh, a significant amount of stress uh, and the consequence of this obviously we don't understand well until more research uh, will, uh, will be done. But uh, if we look into the uh, pre-COVID-19 um, era, uh, some statistics shows that uh, the number one cause of stress in the United States was a jump pre uh, job pressure uh, related to core tension, uh, work overload. Uh, the second one uh, was money. The third one was health um, and uh, health crisis or uh, chronic illnesses. Uh, relationships seems to be an important cause of stress, uh, like loneliness, uh, which we all experience now, um, uh, poor nutrition, uh, inadequate nutrition, uh, processed food, refined sugar. Uh, and as we talk about uh, food, we need to understand there is the concept of uh, food stress. So if you go to have a um, hamburger at McDonald's, uh, you know, that can result in, uh, in food stress. So uh, we need to be uh, more careful with that, especially when we experience stress related to other um, uh, reasons. Uh, the number six, according with the, these statistics uh, published in, um, by the American Psychological Association and American Institute of Stress, uh, was media overload. Uh, and uh, number seven or uh, sleep deprivation. And uh, for uh, today's presentation, I'm going to briefly focus on some of the causes uh, which probably don't pay enough attention. Uh, and uh, one will be uh, media overload, and then we'll talk about uh, sleep uh, deprivation uh, subsequently. Um, regarding the amount of information we get on a daily basis, um, for, uh, it is mentioned that uh, uh, we get information on the internet that is like drinking uh, from a fire hydrant. Uh, USC Annenberg School of Communication mentioned that the reader received the data equivalent to 174 newspaper a day uh, ads included. So the amount of information uh, we get on a daily basis is uh, tremendous. Uh, and uh, you know, if it's positive information is good, but unfortunately a tremendous amount of information, uh, it's a negative information. Uh, which will uh, stress us even, uh, even more. As a result of uh, information overload uh, from uh, emails, uh, news, blogs, uh, uh, chats, etc., uh, many experience uh, stress, anxiety, uh, depression, uh, and uh, poor concentration. And uh, uh, this uh, manifestation of information overload becomes even worse if we talk about uh, fake news, you know, when uh, we get information, but we don't know if that it's uh, real or not. So uh, clearly um, the information overload uh, can have a significant impact on our um, um, uh, mental and uh, emotional health. Uh, there is data which shows that uh, uh, binging on uh, bad news uh, can uh, fuel daily stress uh, and uh, as we all know, if we watch media even before the, the uh, pandemic, uh, a lot of information, uh, negative information uh, was uh, present uh, with uh, uh, victims of accidents or uh, victims of abuse, car crashes, disaster, earthquakes, you, you name it. Uh, so uh, clearly uh, the negative news uh, can be an important uh, source of uh, stress for uh, many of us. Uh, there is data. Uh, which was uh, uh, published in the literature, uh, is a study done by NPR and the Harvard School of Public Health. Uh, they look into 2,500 Americans uh, and uh, they uh, find out uh, that uh, they experience a great uh, deal of stress uh, by uh, watching, uh, uh, reading and uh, listening to, uh, to news. So 
uh, if we talk about uh, um, uh, addressing some aspects of uh, stress, anxiety, depression, uh, I think we, we need to be careful uh, how much uh, time we spend in front of TV and uh, what kind of uh, news we are uh, watching uh, constantly. Um, uh, vulnerable population, uh, as we talk about negative aspect of news, uh, are millennials. Uh, as is shown in this slide, uh, almost one out of two uh, millennials uh, uh, experience uh, worries and anxiety uh, as a result uh, of uh, uh, negative news. Uh, Generation X, uh, one out of three, and the back, uh, among baby boomers, uh, amount, uh, uh, about one out of uh, five. So uh, clearly, um, uh, the impact of negative uh, news uh, can affect uh, different generations at different, uh, different levels. And uh, one of the reasons uh, the generation Y is uh, so much uh, affected is because one of the uh, main way of uh, media communication for them is either a short message system uh, or social media. So this is part of uh, uh, you know, daily uh, activity and communication among uh, uh, millennials. Uh, as a result, uh, they are mostly affected. Uh, by uh, negative news and negative information, uh, which is presented on a daily basis. Um, we all experience what is known uh, techno stress, uh, and it is the human cost of uh, computer evolution. So, uh, techno stress is defined as uh, uh, psychosomatic illness uh, caused by working with computer technology on a daily basis. Uh, and uh, this is something which uh, we um, also need to, to pay attention. Obviously, it's great to have the technology uh, to, which allow us to do what we, we do today, to communicate and to practice each other uh, at a long distance. Uh, however, there are uh, negative aspects of technology which we always need to, uh, to keep in mind. And uh, I want to share with you uh, this uh, brief clip uh, regarding uh, modern uh, technology. Sorry. Playing jazz. Playing jazz. Smoothie. Making smoothie. Calendar. No meetings today. Remember, come back at 9.30. Fire off. Fire off. Open door. Door open. So, so is that the hand thing? Fire off. Open door. Wrong voice command. Open door. Wrong voice command. Open door. Repeat that. Open door. I didn't understand that. Hey, open door. Play on the floor. So, uh, since uh, this webinar was organized by the uh, Vista Institute, I thought it was important to, to, to share this, uh, this with you. Uh, again, we can see uh, clearly one example of uh, how technology works uh, and uh, uh, the consequences uh, of um, um, technology not working as it's supposed to, uh, which can uh, affect us at, uh, at many levels. Uh, so, uh, techno stress uh, obviously can be an important cause uh, of uh, stress for, for many of us. Uh, therefore, we need to learn how to uh, cope and uh, uh, address this in the uh, proper, uh, proper manner. Uh, the next uh, cause of stress I like to talk about for the rest of the presentation uh, will be uh, sleep uh, deprivation and the hormonal changes which uh, are associated with that. Uh, as you know, uh, we experience um, uh, biological rhythms, um, and the most important rhythm we experience is the circadian cycle, which uh, happens uh, within 24 hours. 
Uh, we have other reams we experience, such as ultradian read, which happens to occur 90 to 120 minutes, or the infradian read, which uh, occurs uh, uh, every every month. Uh, so these uh, reams become very important to, to understand, uh, particularly when uh, we uh, pay attention to uh, activities uh, and uh, a sleep, uh, sleep pattern. Uh, it's important to understand the, the rhythm of life and uh, this uh, is a slide which uh, can show you that, let's say, the highest alertness, uh, it's uh, 10 o'clock uh, in the morning for most of, uh, of the people. Um, uh, the best coordination it's, uh, happens around 2.30. So if we plan some activities which uh, require either to be very alert or to have the best coordination, uh, probably uh, the time of the day may be, uh, may be important. Uh, but I want to share this with you because uh, you need to understand uh, about uh, melatonin secretion, uh, which as you know, it's a very important hormones which uh, help us uh, sleep. Uh, as is mentioned in this slide, around uh, nine o'clock, uh, melatonin secretion starts uh, to, to increase. Um, and uh, as that happens uh, progressively, we have a decrease in body temperature and that uh, may uh, be a stimulus for us to go to sleep uh, in the morning as uh, we experience the um, uh, sunlight, uh, the melatonin secretion decrease, body temperature increase, and uh, we wake up. So it uh, becomes very important uh, as uh, we look at uh, our uh, lifestyle uh, to understand uh, the, the cycles and to understand, you know, what's going on with, uh, with uh, our body. Uh, and um, uh, as much as we can to adjust and to do certain activity at the time when we are the, the best. But very important becomes, you know, uh, to pay attention to, uh, to sleep. Uh, the biological clock, it's uh, reset daily by uh, sun exposure. So uh, 20 minutes of uh, sun exposure uh, is important to help the biological clock uh, reset. And also it's important to, uh, for the uh, vitamin D um, uh, production, uh, since uh, uh, it's an element which uh, is part of uh, a healthy um, life uh, uh, style. Uh, clearly, uh, we need to understand uh, that uh, daytime is the uh, time when we experience most of the activities, and obviously the night uh, is the time when uh, we are supposed to sleep. Uh, and uh, what is important to, to know, and uh, I'm sure uh, all of us know is that you know one third of our life we spend sleeping uh, therefore we uh, it's a very important uh, part of uh, uh, daily living and uh, that needs to be uh, addressed uh, properly uh, this slide shows uh, uh, the hours of sleep uh, a person need uh, from uh, the time they are born uh, until adult life uh, so as you see here uh, in the um, right side of the slide, uh, normally we should sleep, uh, sleep between seven to nine hours, eight hours it's an average, uh, which explains why uh, eight hours of sleep uh, daily uh, represents about uh, uh, one third of our daily activity uh, for most of the, the adults. Uh, however, uh, sleeping uh, seven to eight hours a day uh, can be a problem. Uh, particularly for a society which embrace 24-hour uh, culture. Uh, many uh, of us working long hours, um, many of us working at night, uh, and uh, the impact of fatigue, uh, which uh, um, is not uh, in general um, uh, acknowledged by, by many, uh, and it's not part of our uh, consciousness. So uh, we need to pay attention to, to sleep uh, and uh, we need to pay attention uh, not only to the duration of sleep, but uh, the quality of sleep. Uh, since uh, uh, sleep deprivation uh, or poor quality of sleep has important uh, consequences on uh, uh, physical, um, mental, emotional health. Uh, here is uh, data published by uh, CDC uh, which shows that about 30% uh, uh, of Americans uh, sleep uh, less than uh, seven hours. Um, here is data regarding uh, um, uh, women uh, 
particularly, this was published in uh, uh, Mark's Psychiatry uh, several years ago, uh, which shows that uh, 67 of uh, American women uh, experience uh, problem sleeping, 43% uh, uh, experience uh, daytime tiredness, which interfere with daily activity. Uh, and uh, in the summary of this, uh, this paper is mentioned that 17% of working mothers and 68% of uh, single working women uh, experience uh, periodic insomnia, uh, which uh, affects uh, job performance. So uh, uh, you can see from, from this data how prevalent um, uh, sleep deprivation uh, is uh, occur in uh, our society. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, the consequence of this uh, are quite uh, are quite important. Uh, interesting paper was uh, published by Harvard Medical School uh, in uh, 2012, uh, which talks about the uh, exposure to blue light. Um, and the um, uh, sleep uh, disorder uh, department, uh, Harvard uh, Medical School, uh, studied the impact of uh, blue light exposure. Uh, and that is uh, the light exposed by, uh, emitted by different electronics, light bulbs, uh, computers, cell phone, uh, TV set. Uh, and uh, they uh, mentioned that uh, exposure, or constant exposure to, to blue light uh, has a significant impact on, uh, on our health. Uh, reason is because uh, um, blue light exposure uh, can uh, disrupt the circadian ring uh, and uh, can uh, contribute to insomnia, maybe a contributory factor to major disorders uh, such as uh, uh, obesity and the associated uh, diabetes and uh, heart disease. So uh, we need to uh, pay attention uh, again to the environment uh, and understand uh, that uh, certain things uh, can uh, have an uh, important impact on our health uh, and uh, this may be uh, more um, uh, serious for some than, than others. You know, our exposure and response to stress is different from one person to another, but uh, this uh, um, negative uh, uh, impact on our health uh, can be particularly uh, enhanced uh, if we talk about uh, life changes when um, uh, transition from uh, one stage of life to another uh, can create stress and in addition uh, we have additional uh, stressors uh, created by environment, food, etc. Uh, here is some data from the American Optometric Association uh, which shows that uh, clearly uh, blue light exposure uh, can be responsible for uh, sleep disorders, uh, create uh, blur vision. Uh, dry eyes, uh, neck and shoulder pain, uh, eye strain and uh, headache. Uh, and uh, as we talk about this, uh, one of the recommendations uh, is that uh, after half an hour of uh, uh, spending time in front of the computer or a TV, uh, it's good to take your eyes in a different direction and uh, rest your eyes for 20-30 seconds uh, and then you go back to what you were doing before. So uh, this uh, simple uh, modality uh, of um, and not paying attention to the screen constantly uh, is very helpful. Um, also, what becomes very important uh, is, uh, you know, use uh, uh, for those who spend a lot of time in front of the computer, uh, use uh, uh, glasses who filters the uh, blue light. Um, as a result of uh, a poor quality of sleep, uh, people can experience a number of uh, disorders. Uh, there is, I'm an endocrinologist by training and I know a lot of literature which shows that uh, people who don't sleep uh, seven hours uh, are at risk to uh, gain weight and uh, develop uh, a metabolic syndrome and uh, diabetes. Uh, as is shown here, uh, skin um, lack of sleep uh, can affect the mood, uh, the skin create uh, cognitive function. Uh, and there is a lot of data which shows the impact of uh, sleep deprivation on the, the immune system, uh, which in uh, today's environment become uh, so important. Um, and uh, here uh, is uh, data uh, which was uh, published in uh, 2015, uh, showing the relation between uh, um, 
uh, sleep duration uh, and the uh, risk of uh, getting a common cold. So for those who sleep more than seven hours, uh, the likelihood to uh, catch a cold when they are exposed to a virus, about uh, 17%. Uh, that increased to 30% uh, if uh, someone sleeps between five to six hours. And for someone who sleeps less than five, less than five hours, uh, the likelihood to uh, catch a cold, uh, mm -hmm. it's almost uh, 50%. So um, in uh, today environment, uh, you know, uh, the risk of having a decrease in the immune system uh, becomes uh, quite uh, dangerous. Uh, and uh, I recall the, some of the information I mentioned from Italy that a significant number of uh, healthcare providers uh, end up uh, getting sick. And unfortunately, many of them uh, died. The uh, reason uh, obviously uh, was because uh, uh, they were sleep deprived, overwork, and uh, their stress level was uh, quite, uh, quite significant. So again, uh, we need to, to pay attention to uh, sleep uh, because it's something which, uh, from what I know and I experienced in the past, is something which uh, we all uh, neglect. Uh, and uh, since there are so many things uh, which needs to be done on a daytime, uh, we uh, tend to do this uh, at night uh, at the expense of uh, good uh, quality sleep. So, um, to, to summarize the, the effect of uh, sleep deprivation, uh, again, uh, I want to emphasize the role of uh, um, uh, lack of sleep on the immune system. Uh, and uh, also, if we don't sleep well, we experience fatigue. Uh, and uh, that becomes very important uh, because uh, people who experience chronic fatigue, uh, that means they experience uh, chronic stress uh, with all the negative consequences that uh, scan, uh, stress can uh, provide. And uh, here is an example why we need to uh, avoid fatigue uh, is because uh, uh, if uh, fatigue uh, is uh, chronic or repeatedly and uh, it's uh, chronic, uh, that uh, will uh, result uh, in uh, uh, exhaustion, uh, breakdown and uh, subsequently burnout. So uh, I want to spend just a minute on this uh, particular slide because again, it's an important slide uh, as you talk about uh, um, stress and uh, the, the stress response. Uh, anything we perform on a daily basis um, will uh, uh, create certain amount of stress. Um, we can perform things better if uh, we are comfortable uh, on what we are doing. Uh, however, if uh, the stress level uh, or our ability to uh, cope with it, uh, it's a decrease then uh, we develop fatigue uh, and uh, subsequently break down and burn out. So uh, preventing fatigue uh, becomes very important um, in order to maintain uh, physical, mental, emotional health. Uh, and uh, here uh, is the, the role of adequate sleep. Uh, and uh, as we'll talk uh, uh, next week, uh, you'll see the importance of uh, um, a power nap. Uh, which has uh, tremendous uh, uh, multiple benefits um, for uh, us um, uh, who experience uh, daily stress or for us who are very, uh, very busy on a daily basis. Um, I'm going to move into uh, concepts of uh, healthy living. And uh, as uh, we all know uh, there are uh, some uh, good recommendations to be healthy. Uh, one is uh, not to smoke. And uh, uh, we have recent data uh, which shows that uh, uh, clearly smokers uh, uh, have a very high risk of uh, getting sick and uh, probably die uh, when they experience the uh, corona um, virus. Uh, the second uh, recommendation is to have uh, five servings of uh, fruits and vegetables. Uh, and again, next week we'll uh, talk more uh, about uh, uh, this. Uh, the third recommendation is uh, to have uh, 10 minutes of uh, silence, relaxation or meditation a day. Uh, probably the best time to do that is when you get tired, uh, when you feel that uh, you need to take a break. Uh, the third recommendation is to keep a BMI below 30. 
uh, I will consider uh, to be less than that. It's even better. Uh, probably should be uh, with normal limits. Uh, should be uh, between uh, 25 and 29.9. Uh, and uh, the third recommendation uh, is to have uh, 150 minutes of exercise uh, a week. Um, obviously, more difficult to do it uh, in uh, uh, today environment. Uh, although uh, there are many uh, options that people can have. Uh, to be physically active even if they uh, stay home and um, uh, if you watch TV hopefully not too much you could see all kind of uh, um, modalities uh, that uh, people use uh, to uh, be physically uh, active and uh, involve uh, family members and uh, enjoy uh, this important uh, part of uh, uh, activities which keep us healthy. Uh, this uh, slide shows some uh, stress reduction methods uh, moving from, uh, let's say, um, uh, group and social support, so family support becomes very important uh, and in these days we, we realize that there is more important than ever. Uh, creative uh, imagery, reading a good book, uh, thought stopping technique, uh, breathing exercise, proper nutrition, uh, time management, biofeedback, and then meditation. So if I have to choose one, all are equally important, but uh, one modality which is easy uh, to use um, once you practice over and over, um, it's uh, is meditation because it can be used uh, anytime, any place, and uh, can have a significant impact on um, our uh, stress um, level. Uh, Dalai Lama mentioned that uh, sleep is the best meditation uh, and uh, therefore uh, we need to clearly make sleep a uh, priority. Here are some of the health benefits of sleep. Uh, I'm not going to go over all of them, but uh, clearly uh, it's uh, well known to decrease the stress level and uh, also uh, increase our uh, immune uh, system. Uh, therefore, um, adequate sleep uh, and uh, good quality sleep has amazing benefits, uh, which we all need to uh, pay attention to and uh, take advantage of. Um, as you talk about uh, some recommendation for sleep, uh, this comes from uh, Harvard Medical School. Uh, is uh, uh, in order to uh, prevent. Uh, the negative impact of uh, blue light. Uh, it is recommended to use uh, dim red light, red lights for night lights. Avoid looking at a bright screen uh, two to three hours before going to bed. Considering wearing blue blocking glasses, uh, which I'm wearing uh, right now, and um, also expose yourself to lots of bright light uh, during the daytime. Uh, that is important uh, to reset your biological clock. It's very important to um, produce enough uh, vitamin D level uh, and uh, has a good impact uh, on the quality of sleep, uh, mood and uh, alertness uh, next, uh, next day. So uh, sun exposure on a daily basis uh, becomes uh, was always and is, uh, remains very, uh, very important. Um, regarding uh, sleep hygiene, uh, which is defined as a set of practices, habits and environmental influences that impact one propensity to optimize sleep on a regular basis, I want to share with you uh, these uh, seven steps to better sleep, uh, which was published by Ergonomics, Wellness and Innovation site. Uh, number one is uh, allow enough time to sleep. Number two, make your bedroom a peaceful and uh, uh, the environment. Number three, get a regular schedule. Number four, avoid heavy meals, alcohol and caffeine before sleep. Number five, avoid exercise three hours before sleep. Number six, avoid TV beds and other media furniture. And number seven, avoid bright lights for two, three hours before going to bed. So these are simple um, modalities uh, or steps so we can uh, um, use uh, in order to uh, provide and assure that we are going to have uh, good uh, quality sleep uh, and uh, adequate sleep uh, to uh, 
refresh our mind and body and uh, to be able to uh, cope on a daily basis uh, with uh, the amount of stress we uh, experience particularly now so uh, clearly um, you can stress less if you sleep more um, since um, our future depends on our dreams uh, clearly uh, we need to go to sleep and uh, we need to pay attention to good uh, quality sleep um, several days ago um, one of the experts on uh, dream therapy was invited on uh, I think one of the, the channels uh, and uh, since I was uh, preparing this lecture uh, I thought uh, it was important to, to share some of the information uh, learned uh, about uh, uh, dream therapy. Uh, what was mentioned and it's available on the internet on the site uh, which you see above is that uh, our dreams are uh, built in uh, therapists uh, and um, we all need to take advantage of this as you know many times uh, uh, you say let me sleep on a, a situation uh, and you don't want to make a decision until next day uh, the reason is because um, during sleep uh, we may get clarification of certain things uh, and uh, we may find the right solution for something which initially uh, was uh, difficult uh, what was mentioned in uh, this site and in the interview which uh, uh, this expert uh, provided uh, was the fact that um, the dreams can be more disturbing uh, during stressful uh, time uh, and uh, they should uh, uh, help us to reflect uh, about uh, them uh, and also to reflect on how we manage or uh, took care of the stress we, uh, we experience. Uh, practice uh, what the expert mentioned that uh, um, as a result of uh, anxiety related to present pandemics, uh, common dreams are uh, exposure to tornado, flooding and the tidal waves. Uh, and uh, uh, it is recommended to really pay attention to this uh, and uh, see how uh, uh, we can understand them and uh, what changes we need to make uh, next day uh, in order to um, avoid uh, experience uh, you know disturbing uh, uh, disturbing dreams uh, practice uh, what is uh, recommended is to before you go to sleep is to write things uh, down uh, on a piece of paper or in the computer uh, and uh, write things which bothered you uh, and also write and think about some uh, positive uh, outcome uh, as uh, you drift and uh, are ready to fall asleep uh, recommendation is to have some uh, positive thoughts uh, think about something which you like to do in the future in general positive things uh, think about things which you really uh, enjoy uh, in, in the past um, if you learn to think positively each night uh, you can uh, uh, reprogram uh, your brain uh, you can have a good uh, sound uh, quality sleep uh, with all the benefits that uh, sleep can can provide us. Uh, I found this quote which I thought was uh, uh, interesting. Uh, uh, this was uh, Dale Carnegie who mentioned that um, if you cannot sleep then get up and do something instead of lying and worrying is the worrying that gets you not the lack of sleep. So uh, obviously insomnia it's uh, uh, common uh, manifestation of uh, chronic stress and associated anxiety and uh, depression uh, therefore uh, addressing this uh, on a daily basis uh, becomes very uh, very important uh, here are some uh, recommendations uh, regarding insomnia uh, as uh, was uh, published by the uh, sleepfoundation.org uh, uh, if you talk about uh, the environment Again, uh, you find the uh, comfortable mattress and the pillow. Uh, you adjust the, the room temperature. Uh, as we discussed uh, earlier, um, melatonin uh, drops body temperature in order for us to go to sleep. So a cooler environment may be more conceiving uh, 
uh, helping to sleep uh, than a very hot environment. Uh, turn off electronics, uh, dim the lights. Um, regarding behavior, uh, you need to establish healthy sleep behavior, uh, which means uh, uh, proper nutrition, uh, adequate exercise, uh, and uh, avoid uh, coughing, alcohol, especially uh, before uh, going uh, to bed. Uh, relaxing the mind and the body before be, uh, bed time, uh, doing some uh, activity uh, which will help you to relax, some guided imagery, playing or listening to music, uh, watching a funny movie, uh, you know, several hours before you go to bed becomes, becomes important. And uh, ultimately, uh, we can use the sleep aids, uh, either over the counter or prescription drugs. Uh, just want to uh, remind that this should be the last resort and always need to pay attention to uh, the risk of uh, uh, important side effects and the addiction uh, which uh, the sleeping pills uh, have. Uh, one important uh, uh, sleeping pills, uh, I remember several years ago, we removed it from our uh, pharmacy uh, formulary was, was Ambien. Uh, reason is because even a small dose of Ambien uh, can have a prolonged effect and uh, can uh, create uh, uh, sleepiness and the poor coordination next day. So car accidents and many other issues uh, can occur as a result of uh, uh, using um, uh, sleeping pills. So always uh, use it uh, very careful uh, with uh, doctor recommendation. And um, as I mentioned, use it if all the other modalities are not, uh, not effective. So uh, I'm going to um, uh, leave you with uh, these uh, stress less modalities, dance it out, go for a walk, talk about it, Breathe. Breathing is a very important uh, exercise and uh, next week we'll talk more about the importance of uh, the breathing or yoga breathing. Uh, go to bed earlier. Focus on what you control. Reminisce about good times. Ask for a hug and, and smile. Uh, and uh, I want to emphasize again uh, the importance uh, of uh, sleep uh, and uh, the importance of uh, uh, good uh, quality and uh, quantity uh, sleep. Uh, Robert uh, Heinlein mentioned that happiness consists of getting enough sleep. Just that, nothing more. So you could see that uh, uh, if we start to implement uh, healthy life changes, uh, one first step is just to uh, pay attention to our sleep, the duration, quality, do what is uh, right uh, in order to promote this as a, a healthy um, lifestyle change. Uh, and uh, the impact of this uh, can be quite uh, significant. So uh, I'm going to uh, stop here. Again, uh, thank you for your attention and uh, thank you Dr. Zadek for the um, invitation and the opportunity uh, to present uh, this uh, a particular aspect of um, uh, stress management again with uh, emphasis on uh, uh, sleep which uh, many of us neglect many many times and I know about this uh, being a physician and being on call every third night uh, and I know the consequence of this especially as I study this even more lately. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Boogie that was uh, outstanding I think uh, you had so much relevant information that can really help all of us. Uh, I don't think anybody in society is uh, not touched by all the information that you shared. Uh, I, I think this was really packed full of information that about overall uh, connection between stress, sleep, and, and well-being and health. Uh, so I have uh, any of the participants may use the Q&A and you can ask questions. If you like to have your audio, you can just click on the raise your hand and we'll give you audio to ask by audio if you like, or you can type in your question in the Q&A chat box and we'll post them to uh, 
uh, Dr. Boogie. And so you really explored very deeply the connection between sleep and stress, and there's a mutual connection. If you're stressed, it's hard to sleep, and if you're not sleeping, you'll be even more stressed. So it sure. becomes a vicious cycle, and you really uh, went through the sleep hygiene. Those are really uh, fantastic recommendations. Uh, would you recommend any supplements? Obviously, you don't want to take any medication. That's a very good advice. But in terms of supplement, you mentioned the role of melatonin as a natural body's way of maintaining sleep and, and keeping a regular sleep for us. But do you recommend a supplement of melatonin or any other forms of supplement to support that? So, you know, that's, that's an excellent question. And obviously, if you need to use something, probably melatonin may be um, something which may um, not have all the side effects which uh, regular sleeping pills may have it. Uh, but as you talk about any kind of, uh, of supplements, you always need to, to be careful uh, and probably talk with, your, with the physician, be sure that the medication you take doesn't interfere with any other things you take. Uh, so we live in a very, very complex environment and anything we do can have uh, some, some implication. So before you decide to take something, uh, be sure that there is no interaction with any other medication uh, people, people experience. Uh, and I, I'll give you an example, which I, I, uh, I, I thought, uh, you know, we always learn something. Uh, aromatherapy, uh, as you know, it's uh, something which is recommended. Uh, however, if you use, uh, let's say, uh, um, candles uh, with uh, aromatherapy, there is some data published in the literature, and I, I found this uh, several weeks ago, uh, was that uh, that aroma can be, the vapors can be um, inhaled, and the excretion of those happens in the urine, which means the bladder may be at risk to be exposed to uh, some very toxic uh, chemicals. Uh, which uh, can even create the bladder cancer. So uh, we need to educate ourselves as much as we can because things which may appear initially, you know, benign and we may say, what, what can aromatherapy help, you know, be, be dangerous? The reality is that uh, there are uh, potential side effects and that we need to look into. So always use natural things, things which are well established to be safe, you know. Uh, I think turning off TV and listening to music before you go to bed, I don't think it's a problem. Uh, but uh, otherwise, when you do things, we need to really be, be careful. There is so much out there and there are so many interactions we have no idea about. Uh, however, if we study them and learn about them, obviously we can uh, make uh, uh, proper decisions. So going back to melatonin, I think, uh, can be uh, used, uh, you know, you need to start to lower those and increase as much as, uh, as uh, tolerated and uh, uh, always you need to be careful about, uh, you know, potential side effects or interaction with other, uh, other medications. What would you consider the low dose? You know, probably can start with one, one milligram and then, uh, you know, increase to two or three milligrams. But again, all of us need to pay attention to, to our body and to, to, to the response to, to, to medication. You know, um, this way, I, ideal is not to take medication if it's possible. But if you take, take the lowest medication, which has the uh, uh, expected effect and doesn't have as many side effects as a higher, higher dose does. Uh, there's a lot of uh, interest in CBD and you can see CBD in so many different products uh, for so many different types of, of issues. One of them is for sleep. Do you have any specific information about CBD or whether or not it has any beneficial or harmful you know, effects? I, I studied some, some literature again uh, related to uh, endocrinology and uh, I know more about uh, some uh, important side effects than, uh, than benefits. Uh, there is some interesting data which shows that uh, uh, CBD can uh, increase the risk of prediabetes and subsequently diabetes, independent of anything else. Uh, again, uh, marijuana, it's a plant estrogen, 
and uh, can uh, men who use that can uh, create uh, uh, result in breast enlargement. So uh, again, plants medication are made from plants, and we always need to, to, to pay attention to uh, where where they are uh, uh, coming from. Uh, you know, I thought uh, goji berry was a very health uh, product, but uh, some of them came from Asia, uh, and they were highly contaminated. Uh, uh, with pesticides. So the benefit of getting goji berry, you know, can be counteracted by the way, you know, um, the, that product was, uh, you know, uh, contaminated. So uh, as I mentioned, to the environment, we need to pay attention to things we do uh, and uh, we need to understand the source, uh, interaction with uh, other things we do. Uh, so simple things, I think sun exposure, sun meditation, deep breathing, before going to bed, maybe clearly safer than uh, use uh, drug therapy. So I'll avoid it as much as possible. There was a question that someone asked that I used to remember having vivid dreams and I don't seem to have dreams recently. Is that a bad sign? Uh, you know, I'm not a dream expert. I just started to look into dreams <laughs> as I saw this program. Uh, you know, it's it's amazing. The, the internet has so much uh, so much information. I know there are books written about dreams. So uh, I think it's good to, to pay attention to that. You know, uh, probably to write, write things down uh, and start to correlate and see what happened before that resulted in these dreams or what... Uh, uh, how much stress you experience or what kind of uh, conflicts someone experienced which resulted in those uh, those dreams. Uh, you know, it's difficult to understand sometimes what people do at conscious level and what is the significance of that it becomes even more difficult to understand uh, the significance of things which happen spontaneously. But I'm sure there are experts who can uh, look into it uh, and uh, either you can talk with someone uh, or just search the internet and find the significance of, uh, of dreams. You mentioned about taking a power nap during the day. I think that's a great suggestion. As I've traveled in different parts of the world, I see that uh, that is so much more common in some places. Uh, I was in a dental school in, in China and I could see that the whole dental school, they all found the corner at lunchtime to take a nap. They would take all the, turn all the lights and and everyone was like on a bench or somewhere just kind of taking like a 30 minute uh, power nap. In, you know, Europe, uh, so many places take siesta. Of and it's just very difficult to fit that into the American lifestyle, but that's a great suggestion. Definitely, you know, uh, next week we'll talk uh, more uh, about this. So. Uh, Today, focus on what happens at night. Uh, next, we will focus what we can do during the daytime to, to cope with stress. But uh, yeah, naps are very, very important. And I think we have more, more data uh, regarding that, uh, which shows that even a short duration of a nap has a tremendous benefit. There is data which shows that if you take a nap, uh, you have uh, you increase your longevity. Um, and obviously, that may be related to. Um, the benefits of uh, nap uh, in addressing stress and uh, you know resolving some um, uh, you know uh, emotional conflicts uh, which uh, can occur prior to taking the nap so uh, it's a very simple uh, modality probably now in our society we may pay more attention to uh, to stress and the immunity and the fact that we need to have six uh, feet distance between one person to another uh, maybe it would be easier to uh, add these, you know, uh, uh, places uh, where people can go to, to relax uh, because uh, clearly it becomes very, very important the way we address uh, stress uh, uh, on a daily basis. You know, stress was always important, but now probably it's more important than, than ever. Uh, those of you who don't know, Dr. Boogie, is an expert in hypnosis and he was actually president of Southern California Clinical Society of Hypnosis and he has um, a great deal of expertise in that area. Do you have any suggestions for self-hypnosis? Do you have any? Uh... You know, practically any hypnosis is self-hypnosis. So uh, starting to learn uh, 
uh, and the practice, which is, you know, it's, it's a form of meditation. Um, any form of meditation uh, will, will be a tremendous uh, help. Uh, very simple uh, modality is just to focus on your breathing. And if you cannot sleep at night, you know, just focus on breathing in and breathing out. Uh, and uh, as you pay, you know, you can do what is called mindfulness meditation. Um, that is a form of uh, self, uh, self hypnosis. So uh, in today's environment, we have so much information and uh, anything you like, uh, you know, you can, you can access. Practically, you can have a tap hypnotherapist, you know, to uh, uh, read or do suggestion to you before you go to bed. Uh, and that can be very, uh, very powerful. So uh, uh, hypnosis, self-hypnosis, -hy uh, you know, provided by, by an expert, self-hypnosis, you can practice and uh, use it uh, uh, anytime you experience stress. And as I mentioned, the, the transition from meditation to hypnosis uh, is very, very blurry. It's difficult to, to know when you meditate or you are uh, hypnotize yourself. Yeah, you have so much great, great information. I really, really appreciate all the information that you shared uh, for our community. I think this is a so important to pay attention to our overall wellness, especially during this period where we have so much uh, bad news all day long that is being disseminated through the media and, and could be quite anxiety provoking for everyone. Uh, I hope everyone at home is uh, safe. Everyone is taking this period to um, pay attention to your health, your well-being, and you take some of the advice that Dr. Boogie has provided us uh, to heart because there was so much great, great information uh, that Dr. Boogie has shared with us, and we really, really appreciate that. Uh, please join us next week. Uh, Dr. Boogie is joined by uh, another uh, member of the Boogie family. Uh, Dr. Stephanie Boogie is an expert also in wellness and stress and anxiety management. And, and we look forward to uh, learning from you next week. And I really, really appreciate what you did for all of our community today. Thank you very much. My pleasure. And we look forward for next week's presentation. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Yeah. And everyone at home, be safe. Take care of yourself and hope to see you all soon. Great. Thank A you. Virtual hug for everybody. <laughs> Thanks, <man. laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Best regards. Thank you.